things. So, um, our first talk to get today is about dependency analytics, and we have Sunil Samal yes. and Agam Shah, yes. both from Red Hat, uh, and they're here to entertain you and maybe scare you a little bit because yeah. they're part of the group of people that have never seen the Terminator movies. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everybody. So, as I said, I'm Sunil. I'm from Red Hat, and he's Agam, my colleague. So, today, before I start with my presentation, I would like to tell you about an incident that happened back in May 2018, when the NPM security team received and responded to a report that one of the NPM package named Gate Cookies have a security issues, have a malicious backdoor that allows the attackers to inject arbitrary code into a running server and execute it. So the problem, is, the problem here is that the external applications using the package are under the risk of being exploited. So later the NPM security team resolved the issue and unpublished the package from the NPM registry. So here you can see we use dependencies on a daily basis to build our applications. So dependencies are nothing but third-party libraries or modules that, you, that we use to build our application. And there are lots, lots and lots of dependencies. So hundreds of dependencies gets published every day. So as you can see in the graph, let's take for example for the NPM, each day, thousands of NPM packages gets published to NPM registry. So this many number of choices a developer has to choose from. So when we started looking into this space, we found a potential problem to solve so that we can ease the development process. So we figured out that there are three certain parameters that we need to see while choosing a dependency. Okay, the first one is security vulnerability. The second one is license. Third one is popularity and maintainability. And the fourth one is completeness of the application stack. Next slide. Okay, what is CVE? So CVE is a security vulnerability that may or may not be present in your application dependencies. So it's always better to check for CV before using any dependencies to build your application so that you, at later point of time, you are not under the risk of being exploited by an attacker. And the second one is license. License can be tricky to choose. Like, no, most of the developers, they don't have an idea like how the license, open source license works. So how many of you here know, like, the Apache license and the GPL license don't go with each other. So like most of the developers don't know this fact. So they suppose, for example, you are using a package which is in G G GPL and you decided to release your project under Apache 2. You know you can't do that because Apache and GPL are conflict, like they are in conflict. So at this point of time, there is no tool or application which do that. So when we started looking into this space, we created a like kind of extension for VS Code, ex uh, VS Code, which helped developers to choose the right dependencies in the development phase only. So let's see a demo how you, how you can choose, how you can use our extension and choose the right dependencies for your application. So my colleague Agam will explain, like we'll show you the demo and explain our goals and future use cases. Over to you. Uh, so yeah, thank you Sunil. So as uh, Sunil mentioned, uh, there are a lot of dependencies to choose from and uh, uh, this ecosystems are growing rapidly. Like uh, for NPM, it, for Maven actually, there were 102% growth in number of packages in the last two years. So you can imagine. Now, coming to our goal, we are we are providing our goal in three aspects. F first is the uh, yeah, sorry. first is the higher confidence aspect. 
where you can choose dependencies which are, uh, which are free of any vulnerabilities and which do not have any license conflicts. So you can have higher confidence while you are productizing your application. You have higher confidence in your deployments because and your enterprises have confidence in you that you are sh the shipping and building the same, like uh, the best software out there. And the second is the increased productivity levels. So what we mean by here is you don't need to go anywhere to search for any security vulnerabilities or you don't need to go anywhere to search for licenses for a specific dependency because we all show you right inside your editor. Third is the reduced development risk. As, as we already discussed, there are a lot of malicious packages that are out there and we should, as a developers, we should be knowing that while developing your application because that increases our risk if we don't do that. So yeah, it might save your company a few dollars and you, your time, yeah. This is the current statistics of our platform. So as you can see for Node, we have uh, like 577,000 packages and 1.2 million versions that we track for CVEs and uh, uh, license conflicts. And also we have 438 CVEs as of now for Node and uh, 531 CVEs for Java and 195 for uh, Python. And we have 28 licenses, open source licenses in our system. So if you use if you're using any of the 28 licenses, then we can actually show you if there's a conflict or under what license your project can be released. Now coming to the demo part. So uh, this is a VS Code extension. So you, uh, I, the presentation is already on the FOSS Asia website. So when you go to the slide, you can just click this image, and it will land you up at the VS Code marketplace. So this is the uh, marketplace of Visual Studio Code. As you can see, uh, we, the, the extension name is Dependency Analytics. You can just click on Install, and it will open the link inside your VS Code editor right here. So I already have it installed. So let's just quickly go through the demo. So here I will be showing two kinds of applications. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. I think that's visible now. So here I'll be showing two kinds of applications. First is a node application, which is a color chooser. So you can actually, ch uh, it, it actually styles your terminal using a color of your choice. And the second is a Java application, which is we created for uh, just for this demo, uh, for license conflicts. So yeah, so we are using pom.xml for Java, as many of you might be using. And we are using package JSON, that is the NPM package manager for node. And uh, yeah, so here as you can see, we are using four dependencies. First one is the ANSI styles. Second is extrap, uh, escape string reject regular expressions. Third is supports color. And fourth is bootstrap. Now we are using specific versions. Well, let's say for an example, we are using bootstrap 4.1.1. Now, as you can see, there is a red line down there. That means it, it's a, it, it has a security vulnerability. And if you hover over it, you can see that application dependency bootstrap is vulnerable to the following CVEs. Now our recommendation is to use version 4.1.2 and the latest version is 4.3.1. So we actually show you right inside your editor how you can get rid of the CVEs. So if you see, there is a tooltip. Uh, switch to recommended version 4.1.2. You can just click on it, and it's done. So now, actually, the CVEs that we saw, we can actually see it as a part of the stack report. So how you could generate a stack report, the whole report with CVEs, license, and everything, you right click and you see the dependency analytics report. Right down there, you can press Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows to directly just generate the uh, report for you. So let's see the report now. So coming to the report part, as we can see, we have four cards uh, based on the four perspectives that we have. Uh, so first is the CV card, as you can see. Bootstrap has CV 2018-14040. And if you Google it, you can actually see inside the NVD database that in Bootstrap before 4.1.2, access is possible. So if you're using this, if you're using Bootstrap version before 4.1.2, which was our case, we were using 4.1.1, and your application is vulnerable to an access attack. Now you as a developer might not know that. Uh, before this extension tells, before this product tells you. So, and it's very useful for you in the development phase to make those decisions. Because once your product is shipped, and if a third party is able to access your application using an XSS attack or is able to exploit, then it, it comes to a responsibility part. So, yeah, so it, it's better if you do it beforehand. Second is the 
licenses tab, where right now the suggested license is MIT because we have no license conflicts. So how is it MIT? Uh, now we can go to the dependency detail part where we have all the four dependencies that were in the package JSON that are being analyzed. Now we have no unknown dependencies here, but that might not always be the case. There are, there are you know, as, you, as I said, there are thousands of packages that are being gathered every day in NPM. So we might not have data for each and every package out there. But uh, we made sure that whenever we see an unseen package, we ingest it for you. And whenever you run the report next time, we will have all the data you need for that particular package and the particular version. So we have automated data pipelines to do that. So coming to the dependency details part, as you can see, supports color is as licensed under MIT, and it has this GitHub statistics. So why are GitHub statistics important over here? So you can actually check if your project or if your package is being famous across GitHub or not. How many contributors are there? How many stars? How many forks? How many dependent repos? What is the usage statistics? So you can actually make an informed choice that if this package is being used or is being maintained anymore or not based on the statistic you, you are just seeing right now. So that helps me in making right choices. And uh, uh, it has also has a license, as I just said, it also has tags. So these tags are just from the NPM registry, if you're familiar with the tagging mechanism of NPM. And uh, this is the bootstrap. So as you can see in bootstrap, we actually see a warning sign in the security, security part because we had a CV, right? As if you remember in the 4.1.1 version. Now, uh, these are the CV IDs because we had a CV for this package and the license is also MIT for this uh, particular dependency. Now the third uh, package is the escape string, and here it is also licensed under MIT, and ANSI styles is also licensed under MIT, and hence our project license can be MIT. Now if there were a restricted license for this, any of these packages, then there would be a license conflict. I think Sunil already mentioned about Apache and GPL v2. Oh, uh, they, are not, they don't go together because of some uh, patent uh, clauses. So uh, those that can be a license conflict. We will see a license conflict uh, in, in our uh, Java application soon. So yeah, we'll, it, it's a part of the next demo. Yeah. So then comes the insights part. Now insights is basically how, like, uh, what packages can you use? Think of it. Think of it as a recommendation system for your application dependencies. Like if you're using these four packages, uh, uh, then you you might be interested in using. This, this packages as well. Like it's based on our data collection that we collected public data from GitHub, like what developers mostly use. And uh, we developed, created a machine learning model uh, that basically recommends you packages based on the packages that you're using right now. So for example, in terms of Python, uh, you might be using NumPy, SciPy, and because they're pretty common nowadays, then you might be interested in our model will say you might be interested in Pandas or TensorFlow or Scikit-learn or Matplotlib or Seaborn those kinds of things. So basically, we have trained our models based on the data that we had from the developer's uh, usage point of view, like what kind of packages usually developers use together. So it's, it's kind of helpful because uh, you're developing a web application, and web application is not a common thing nowadays, or a machine learning application. It's not a very common thing. Every, everybody is doing it. So you might be interested in knowing what other people or what, what people usually use along with those packages. So you don't have to go and search every time, you know, uh, what, what is the best package out there for this particular, let's say, plotting library, right? So that's useful. And we also show a confidence score, like how much confident we are while, develop, while recommending this package to you. So let's say for chalk, we are 66% confident. Now, as you, can, as you can see, there is also a feedback button, like, okay, this is plus one and this is minus one, so if you're happy, if you're using it, then you can just say, okay, I'm using it, it's great for me, it, it, it works for me. It's a plus one, and oh, I don't like it. It's, it, you know, it doesn't make sense for me. So it's it's minus one. Uh, also, if you drop down, you can see a recommended version, what version to use of that particular dependency. Also, you can see the same statistics and the licenses for those recommended dependencies as well. So you can actually make a choice of what dependency to use based on the confidence score, or either you are comfortable looking at the statistics, or you are comfortable looking at the license that the dependency is using. Maybe you want to run a project under MIT, so you might not want to choose any dependency which is under less, more restricted licenses as GPLv2, right? It doesn't make sense for you. So those are the kind of things. And <coughs> coming to the next part where we are using a Java application. So here we are, as uh, I just entered a stack report, uh, similarly as I did last time, we are using seven dependencies 
Now here, as you can see, uh, in the licenses tab, there is a license conflict. Now, how do we show the license conflict? So we actually show you the dependency name which the license is conflicting with. So dependency is javax.sublet, sublet API. And what is the license? CDDL plus GPL v2 with class path exception. That is the license this dependency is licensed under in. And we also show you the, the other, other one, the org.javaassist, colon javaassist, which is licensed under Apache. As we already, I think, discussed, Apache and GPL v2 don't usually go together. So here is the license conflict that you just saw. Now, how you can actually, you can actually see what is the current version you're using and all the statistics right over here. So you might want to actually, you know, change your dependency to uh, some other compatible license. So here is the dependency detail path where we are seeing seven dependencies that we are using. And as you can see, there is a, a check mark in the, every other field except the license step for Sublet API. And also for same goes for Java Assist because they are conflicting. So you can actually know what, what kind of things are, are broken here, right inside your editor. So that's fine. So then there's the insights part again. Now here we are using many Apache packages. So as you can see the third recommendation, Apache Commons Lang 3, which is used with most of the Apache packages out there. If you're using some Java Apache packages, so we're, we are, the confidence score is really high. We're 84% confident that you might want to use this dependency. So yeah, that's, that's I think pretty much it for the demo part. So you can actually, uh, use it if you're using VS Code right now and you can try it on your laptops if you're using Visual Studio Code. And uh, right now we support Java and Node. Uh, we, are, we are releasing support for Python and Go soon. So we will see it in the future use cases part. So coming back to the presentation. Oh. Yeah, so what are the future use cases that we have? So as I said, Python we are ready to support. We, it's already in beta, it's going under internal testing. Second is the Go. Uh, Golang, uh, third is transitive dependencies, which is already under internal testing. So what, I will talk a little bit about transitives. So what transitive dependencies do is, how actually, uh, so let's say for an example, in this particular case of NPM, we only had four dependencies. Now if you, if you go to the node modules part of it, once you're on NPM install, you can see many dependencies like AJ, VEA, CON, which you didn't mention here at all at all, right? They, they don't appear here at all, because those are like dependencies of dependencies. Like maybe ANSI Colors needs it or Bootstrap needs it, right? You don't know. So we are actually going to show you a complete stack of what your dependencies are using, as in the whole transitive report as well. And we are going to show you the statistics, the license conflicts, the CVEs, everything for all of your transitives right inside your IDE. So you can actually make a choice as to how and how, like sometimes what happens is, there is not a problem in some direct dependency. For example, there might not be a problem in Bootstrap, but one of the dependencies of Bootstrap has a problem. So how would you know without uh, actually, you know, looking at the report? So that is kind of tricky as well. So uh, that is one part. So we are looking at transitives. It's already in beta, and I think it will be released along with Python. Uh, third is the container application. Fourth is the container application scanning, where we actually are planning to integrate in, integrate this whole thing inside Claire, if you are aware, a tool by CoreOS, which actually uh, scans your container images for uh, runtime vulnerabilities, but we also are planning to do it for application vulnerabilities, so that we have a complete end-to-end -end picture from runtime to, from your system to your application, and we can provide you a whole report as to how your application is vulnerable at what levels. Uh, fifth is the probable security vulnerability based on AI. So right now what happens is 60% of vulnerabilities are never reported to NVD. So the NVDs, think of NVD as a public database for vulnerabilities. It's not easy to get through, like it's not easy to just look at it and you know, tell what package is vulnerable, but it's, it's public, like anybody can see it, anybody can use it for their purposes. So that is like 60% don't actually even end up in NVD. So what we are going to do is, we are going to look at GitHub, uh, we are going to look at GitHub, so uh, particularly we are going to look at GitHub commits, GitHub PRs, GitHub issues, and based on the text, like if it looks like a CVE has been fixed or any security vulnerability has been fixed, uh, based using machine learning, then we are going to uh, show that right inside your ID. 
before it even gets out there, like it's even if it gets reported, right? So that's one part. And the fourth is predicting service upgrades for OCP. So this is more to do with OpenShift. So if you're using OpenShift 3 and you want to migrate to OpenShift 4, now if your application is compatible with OCP 4, before even deploying that, we will tell you using machine learning that, okay, uh, how similar applications were deployed and if they're compatible at all. So you can actually make an informed decision beforehand if you want to migrate to OCP 4 or you want to remain to OCP 3. So that's, that's about it. You can find us on GitHub and you can chat with us on Mattermost. Mattermost is just like Slack, but it's open source and uh, it's all public. So you can file us an issue or you can rate us on uh, Visual Studio Marketplace and you can leave us some reviews on Mattermost and you can, if you have any queries or any questions or any feedback for us, then you can just reach out to us here. Thank you. I think we have time for questions, right? Yeah, one or two minutes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're basically asking for uh, any other platforms, right? Uh, like Sublime or IntelliJ or Vim or anything, yeah. So we have plans to do that, and we have received a number of feature requests from all of the developers that we need for IntelliJ, and uh, so we are prioritizing it accordingly. I think uh, once we go back and give this feedback to the team, we will, I think, prioritize it accordingly and let you know. Uh, you can just follow us on GitHub or on Mattermost to see where we are, and you can actually file an issue for this, marking it as a feature request. I will highly suggest you do that so that we can look at it. Yeah, it doesn't get lost. Yeah. Any other questions do we have? Oh, you can find us at the CentOS booth uh, if you have any questions or you want us to demo something to you or you want to just try the extension, you can just drop by and uh, we will see what we can do. I think, thank you.